And there's um, the idea that there are different circuits for different symptoms. We've heard that kind of theme, whether it's depression or schizophrenia or any other disorder. There's a network, which is also another name for a circuit. Some of these networks can be visualized by modern scanning. Some of them can't. And there's also connections, which are called synapses and circuits or nodes in networks. And we believe that what goes wrong in the memory network, if there is such a thing, is that the output from your memory circuit is screwed up because that thing in white is degenerating. And that's maybe a cholinergic neuron, at least early. It's more complicated than that. But certainly the memory network, in terms of loss of cholinergic input, is a factor. And it's also a factor in some of the treatments. Psychosis network, we've talked about in my earlier lecture today. It's the same one. Something goes wrong maybe in the cortex that messes up those same neurons that are theoretically neurodevelopmentally abnormal from schizophrenia, but you put a, tack or a plaque or a tangle or you put a, a stroke or something up there, disrupt that, and then out comes the psychosis. And uh, drugs like pimavancin have been used in that. Uh, the Corona XT, the drug I talked about this morning, is also, I didn't know if we mentioned that, that's going into the psychosis of Alzheimer's disease uh, simultaneously. So the cholinergic drugs are working on the psychosis network. I haven't heard that the Lulotronat is actually going to work in that for the trace amines, but it certainly could. And then today we'll talk about the agitation network, which is these are all parallel pathways. They're different ones. They're outputs from the cortex, theoretically, and that they're controlled by different neurotransmitters. And it's a complex story a little bit, but I'll try to simplify it with some cartoons. And over here on the right, we have two classes of drugs that are already either very imminent or sort of imminent for approval. Brexpiprazole, something you know in, in another context, proof for schizophrenia and for the augmentation of depression, is also in late stage, and we'll talk about that. And there's also forms of cough medicine. I mean, sorry, bupropion. I mean, I'm sorry, dexamethorphan. <laughs> it is actually dexamethorphan is cough medicine. But it's also an NMDA antagonist. You may know it as the first one, Avalati, already approved for depression, right? The same thing. They, I don't know if they're going to change the name of it or something. Sometimes the drug companies do that when they have a different indication. But the same doses and the same drugs are actually in late stage development for agitation. And so is uh, the dexamethorphan with quinidine or deuterated, that's more to extend it, the patent life is anything. Uh, those are drugs that are in an old drug called, old drug now, Nudexta. It's approved for pseudobulbar affect and has been on the market. And that same drug is uh, in testing, but it's not coming along as well or as quickly as the so-called Ovelity. We'll talk about that.